Excellencies, ladies and, and gentlemen, first of all, I would like to, to say what a great honor it is for me to be before your assembly to present my candidacy for the post of Director General of the World Health Organization. My professional life has been devoted to two fields of activity medicine and politics. In the medical field, my passion is public health. I am an epidemiologist working on cardiovascular risk factors and particularly on cholesterol levels. That has led me to become a professor of public health at the University of Paris and a visiting professor at Harvard, the Harvard School of Public Health in Boston. At the, in the political level, I have had many responsibilities at different levels. First, the local level, the municipal level. I like the local level because we can work concretely on the ground. I was mayor of Lourdes, and after that, I was mayor of Toulouse, one of the French biggest cities. I was in charge of 10,000 civil servants, and I um, managed an annual budget of $1 billion. At the national level, I was Minister of Health on two occasions. But the last time, in 2004, I carried out one important reform of the French health insurance system, making savings of more than 7 billion euros a year. And I implemented this reform without uh, provoking strikes which is, as you know, very difficult in my country. <laughs> At the international level, I was Minister of Foreign Affairs. Uh, between 2005 and 2007, during that period, I created two things. First, the group Diplomacy and Health, to enhance the importance of health in foreign policy. On the other hand, I created UNITAID, U-N-I-T-A-I-D, in international organization hosted by the WHO. It is the first laboratory of innovative financing. And this, the idea at, the, at that period was, innovative idea was to add one dollar or one euro per plane ticket. It's painless for the state, the traveler has to pay one dollar more. But with this money, first, I convinced a dozen of, of countries in the world. And with this money, we raised more than 2.5 billion dollars. And with this money, we reduced the prices of drugs, medicines, and diagnosis tests by 80% for antiretroviral for children, by 60% for second line antiretroviral, and by 60% for malaria and test diagnosis on TB. I speak about that at the beginning of our presentation because I think that the budget of the WHO need sustainable, predictable, and additional funding. And innovative financing are like that. Still, on the international level, I worked a lot with the United Nations. Uh, I was appointed Under Secretary General in 2008, and I am the special advisor of the Secretary General for Innovative Financing for Development. Excellencies, ladies and gentlemen, it is my first speech to your assembly. And I would like to thank you to, for allowing me to present my vision of the WHO and essentially my strategy to renew the WHO leadership
in global health. To make this vision a reality, we have to strengthen the WHO internally and to strengthen the WHO externally. At a time when health crisis, new health crisis, threatens the world, the international community ever, no, it is absolutely essential, critical. We need the efficiency and the authority of the WHO more than ever. At the world level, in my point of view, the WHO has to be the organization who defines health as a political priority and not only as a technical priority. As a political priority, not only because it is a human right, but because it is the main, the best investment for the development for the economic development of a country. To make this possible, we need absolute confidence between the WHO and its member states, you. And to enhance this confidence, we have to implement three R. Responsiveness, reform, and results. My first priority will be responsiveness, would be responsiveness. You adopted during the last World Health Assembly the um, emergency program. We have to implement it quickly. For that, we need three actions. First, secure reliable long-term funding. 194 countries adopted this program and they have to contribute according to their means. Otherwise, the WHO has to work with member states, but also with major donors, with the World Bank, with IMF, with all relevant partners, to coordinate, coordinate harmonize the budget for the program, but also, please, to avoid proliferation of funds. The second action we have to do is the, to provide the WHO leadership for the responsiveness. For that, we have to co-locate two functions of the WHO, the preparedness function, and the emergency response functions. We have to co-locate these two functions. And uh, also, we have to set up an independent advisory committee. And this committee must review all the decision making and all the responses to disease outbreak. And finally, and essentially, if we want to have the leadership of the WHO in emergencies response, we have to engage partners. First, with the UN agencies, and particularly with OCHA, UN OCHA. So we have to, to ask the WHO and UN OCHA to implement a very strong partnership with information sharing mechanisms. We have also to implement uh, um, partnership with NGOs. During the last Ebola crisis, we saw the importance of NGOs and particularly Doctors Without Borders. And when there is an outbreak, I think that the convening, convening power of the WHO has to play a big role. The WHO has to convene governments industry, but also donors and researchers to contribute to accelerate the development of uh, urgently needed drugs. The last action for the responsiveness is to prioritize support
to countries, to countries on the ground. The WHO must have a strong frontline capacity at the regional and the country levels. This will involve a decentralization of budget and staff to region and countries which are the most in need. It is my proposals for responsiveness. Second reform. The WHO must function with clear lines of accountability between the director general, regional directors, and country officers. And also, we have to deal with the GPG, the Global Policy Pro um, uh, Program, in depth. So first, the WHO has to, you know, if we want to build the accountability and the credibility of the WHO, we have to set up a new, flexible, efficient, and modern human resources system uh, with a workforce of uh, world-class experts, internationally recognized, capable of deploying staff and uh, uh, to uh, countries which are the most in need. Second thing, we have to set up an audit function, strong audit function, knowing that the audit recommendations have to be implemented swiftly, fully, and quickly. The third R is results. I think it's the most important and the most difficult to do. We have to consistently demonstrate the efficiency of the WHO. So the WHO cannot do everything. We have to prioritize. So we have to make our cho uh, choice with member states. We have to choose priority because, for example, the WHO has a very good comparative advantage for this activity. We have to prioritize or deprioritize more aggressively and to communicate why, because results. And we have to go from a budgetary culture to a culture of accountability. And during the budget 2018 and 2019, I think that we have to make, to, to be more transparent and little by little to link finance to results. But we cannot speak about efficiency of the WHO if we don't speak about partnerships with vertical fund. WHO, Global Fund, and Gavi, for example. The, the target is the same, is to improve global health. But Global Fund and Gavi have a lot of efficiencies, moderni modernization of the human resources, modernization of the organizations, and money, by the way. And the WHO has to, you know, find out, you know, has to define partnerships with vertical funds. It is, for me, absolutely crucial. Now, if you accept, I am going to shift to French, because I do think that the WHO also has to defend the multilinguism. Je vais donc parler Therefore, I will now speak in French, and I will address uh, different topics that are dear to my heart. We need to strengthen health systems. Les maladies non transmissibles. We need to address non-communicable diseases, universal access to medicines, and uh, antimicrobial resistance. All this in the space of 15 minutes, I think. However, let me start with strengthening health care systems. La chose la plus importante pour l'OMS. That is the most important thing for WHO. In other words, 
we need to remind the commitments taken at Almaty 40 years ago. Health for all. We need to strengthen primary health systems and also at the community level so as to set up universal health coverage. Il y a des dizaines de millions de pauvres qui Dozens of millions of uh, poor people do not have access to midwives, doctors, nurses, healthcare professionals that are qualified, uh, and therefore to reduce uh, the uh, child and maternal mortality rates, to allow the most vulnerable populations to have access to care, women, children, uh, individuals living with HIV AIDS, uh, mentally diseased individuals, palliative care patients. This is the only solution. Secondly, WHO needs to be the organization that requires integration, the integration of public health in healthcare systems. For me, public health is the most important pillar of medicine. And therefore, we need to give value to healthcare workers with respect to wages, with respect to their training, and so forth. This is absolutely essential. Thirdly, if we want to strengthen healthcare systems, you know, I've uh, carried out about uh, 95 visits in different countries. I've, I've spoken to ministers of health, and I know they need uh, greater budgets because you can't strengthen healthcare systems without uh, bigger budgets. And we also need to help them with innovative financing efforts. I would also create a department or a task force on innovative financing within the organization to precisely be able to help uh, countries as well as WHO's budget. And lastly, I can't leave this issue of strengthening healthcare systems without uh, talking about a worldwide task force to improve the health of migrants and refugees specifically. We can't leave countries to their own devices. They're receiving tens of thousands of refugees without any sort of worldwide source of aid with regard to epidemics, vaccinations, and treatment of uh, communicable diseases, of NCDs. Un des grands problèmes de santé publique sera les violences faites aux femmes et aux enfants. Another major challenge is the violence uh, against women and children. Uh, we have to recognize that this is a major public health problem, uh, and uh, therefore it requires specialized public health workers uh, to prevent uh, and uh, to be able to react in the face of these human, right, human rights violations. Lastly, we need to encourage countries to set up information systems because gathering data is absolutely essential if we're going to do proper epidemiology studies. Maintenant, nous passons aux maladies non transmissibles. Now I want to talk about NCDs. Here we're faced with a bit of a paradox. On the one side, you have diseases that are the most deadly, 14 million people a year of less than 70 years of age. And then on the other side, there isn't much political will. There is the beginnings of a political will, but not much, to be honest. So WHO needs to remind the states of the commitments already taken. I'm thinking here of the Global Action Plan that you have already set up for NCDs. I'm also thinking of the Interagency UN Task Force on NCDs. Secondly, and here I think WHO has played a political role, we need to properly understand that health isn't only ministries of health. Health is a far broader subject. The health agenda is enormous. And therefore, we need to be able to talk to governments, we need to be able to talk to industry uh, actors, we need to talk to uh, uh, patient associations, we need to be able to include NGOs. And uh, allow me to say the following, when we talk with the industry, the industry has an enormous impact on NCDs. I'll address the issue again later. So we need to set up standards. This institution has the legitimacy to enshrine these. This is a standard setting organization. It can set up these standards for fat, for salt, for sugar, 
these uh, standards do not exist on a worldwide basis. Different countries have different standards. Uh, and as regards to NCDs, we also need to talk about public health. Education for the I'm referring to prevention, education, promotion of health. Uh, this goes to, to uh, speaks to testing and to early diagnosis. Diagnosis. This also leads to early care and prevention. So prevention is absolutely essential as well. Risk factors such as smoking. We need to ask all countries to sign up to this convention that dates back 10 years now. But they also need to sign the WHO agreement uh, on trade in tobacco. Ensuite, il faut se battre avec peut-être aussi l'agroalimentaire sur le sucre. We also maybe should uh, fight on more specific issues such as salt, sugar, and so forth, but not. One person in this institution should have a conflict of interest with the industry. There should be no conflicts of interest. If we want to fight against uh, uh, high blood pressure, child obesity, diabetes, uh, cardiovascular diseases, cancer, uh, we need to carry out this preventative work here. Par l'accès universel aux médicaments. And I'll wrap things up with the following. Universal access to medicines. This universal access to medicines, uh, well, I've spent 15 years of my life on this topic. I've reduced the price of medicines quite simply by playing on market dynamics. That simple. So, first and foremost, if you want uh, all uh, innovative medicines to be affordable, you need to play with these market dynamics. Secondly, you need to ask pharmaceutical companies to keep the old and effective medicines, because sometimes they, they do work. They're not being purchased in rich countries, but they work very well, so they need to be, still be produced and distributed. And enfin, troisièmement, lorsque les médicaments ne sont pas rentables, eh bien, and thirdly, when uh, medicines are not affordable, well, at that stage, uh, we need to find a way, a system with respect to forgotten tropical diseases, child diseases, and so forth. Uh, WHO should have a platform right here in this institution in Geneva to uh, urge uh, the pharmaceutical industry to set up not affordable medicines that can make them affordable and to find solutions. Dernier point, les La lutte contre antimicrobial résistance. Lastly, the fight against uh, antimicrobial resistance, AMR. There's been a very good report produced, uh, but it'll be very difficult to implement all its suggestions. Uh, this is a, a major topic. Il y a trop de demandes et il n'y a pas assez d'offres. Trop de demandes sur prescription, des mauvaises prescriptions. Uh, there is too much demand and not enough supply. There is also the problem of over-prescription, uh, bad uh, prescriptions. Uh, many, in many countries you can buy antibiotics without uh, a prescription. So what I would require is a worldwide campaign led by WHO because once again uh, Health goes beyond uh, issues of disease. We need to have a worldwide campaign that sets up human medicine, veterinary medicine, that looks at livestock, agriculture, trade, financing, consumers, as well as the environment. This is the only solution if we're going to fight against AMR. Whenever we, we eat uh, uh, meat or fish, we're actually ingesting antibiotics. And uh, we also need to address supply. For 20 years now, the pharmaceutical industry doesn't uh, generate antibiotics because they don't make any money with them. So I come back to the problem I mentioned earlier regarding essential medicines. In this institution, we need a platform. Quite obviously, we need this in innovative uh, center for financing. And the WHO needs to play a key role here. Nous l'avons fait nous avec un financement innovant qui s'appelle le Medicines Patent Pool, la communauté de Brevets. We did it uh, with uh, the Medicines Patent Pool, uh, and we need to continue to innovate. Recherche publique hand in hand with the industry, with researchers, with public uh, individuals from the public sector to find those medicines that we don't have today. We need to work with the experts that know how to do it. The World Bank has also had similar initiatives. Uh, we need to work uh, with UNITAID, with the medicines patent pool, with FIND, with PATH. Uh, these are people who are experts who know the problem inside out. Uh, and here I really want to congratulate the directors and the teams that work on the problem of AMR because it's truly an example of outstanding work carried out in this institution. I'm not sure how much time is left. How much time do I have left?
Cinq minutes. Voilà, donc je voudrais juste terminer en vous, donc, en vous disant que pour moi, c'est une étape extrêmement importante. So I'll just wrap things up by saying that for me, this is an important and indeed a crucial step. WHO has a special, unique legitimacy. WHO is a universal institution covering health. L'OMS, parfois, est attaqué. And I believe that some, sometimes WHO is under attack. We need to be very wary here, because if we don't carry out the reforms I highlighted at the beginning, and I know that many of these reforms are already underway, the health emergencies program, that's already a, a, a bit of a revolution. With lines for uh, accountability uh, and authority that are clearly delineated. So you've already started, but we need to go even further, I believe. And I think that's the work for the future DG to maybe do fewer brilliant things, but to really be in the engine room. Working to uh, rebuild and to regain this lost credibility, because without this, I will tell you what's going to happen. And I've discussed this with many member states, some of the major donors even, and they've told me that they will reduce uh, their donations until we reach uh, a critical level. And then there will be a major credibility problem. Et moi, j'aime tellement l'Organisation mondiale de la santé comme vous, sinon vous ne seriez pas ici. And I love WHO as much as all of you, otherwise you wouldn't be here, and I believe we need to defend her. And we also need to uh, address the issue of fragmentation. Gavi, Stop TV, Rollback Malaria, all of these are examples. Unit 8, I'm also an example of this uh, uh, fragmentation process. So we need to fight to make sure that this house remains the heart, the center, where we talk about health in broad strokes. Une présentation sur l'Organisation mondiale de la santé. Finally, you can't end the presentation uh, on WHO without mentioning the billions of human beings that do not have the same access uh, as uh, the wealthiest among us. This is uh, our topic. Ca cancer was mentioned earlier. I made a presentation at the World uh, Cancer Summit with many uh, ministers of health. How are we going to be able to pay down the road chemotherapy treatments, individual treatments in, poor, in the poorest countries. Uh, this is a, a major subject, which is why we need to set up this innovation, be it in terms of funding or spending. We need to invent new forms of finance that allows us to have more resources, and maybe also we need to do more with less, work on added value. Obviously, every dollar, every euro in this institution needs to be well spent. And uh, sometimes when we see that uh, with certain licenses and so forth, respecting intellectual property and so forth, we can make a lot of money simply by reducing the prices of certain line items with respect to the poorest countries. So. I'm thinking about these people. It's been my life, my life's work. I've spent the last 15 years of my life working for the poorest. Thank you very much.